Ladies and gents, today we're talking about something a little different. We're talking about a massive whale, okay? We're talking about a massive whale that can sing, that can play the flute, that's pretty talented, and is also massive and a whale. And this person's name is Lizzo. Now, I call this person a whale because this person seems very comfortable fat shaming other people that she in fact employs. It's pretty crazy. She employs these backup dancers and will fat shame, will ridicule, will make fun of their looks. For what reason? We're not exactly sure. Now again, everything that I just said, this is allegedly because ultimately these accounts are coming out from anonymous sources, they're coming out from backup dancers, they're coming out from people that, quite honestly, are accusers. And while I tend to believe that this is probably true, it's my belief, right? It's not fact. We don't know. That's what due process is for. That's why we say innocent until proven guilty. And that's why my next topic tomorrow, Nick is not green, is somebody I can't wait to talk about. Hope you guys like that little teaser there. Yes, Lizzo, who is well known for attempting diets, giving up on diets, being huge and loving herself, right? Because we all love body positivity and self-love. She is possibly one of the most toxic people in Hollywood. I mean, the idea that someone the size of Lizzo is fat shaming other people, quite honestly, it's one of the most comical things I've ever heard. As I was looking up details on the Lizzo situation, this is something that comes up on her Wikipedia when you look her up. She has a strong LGBTQ plus following and has dubbed her fans lesbians. She later st she later stated that she considers herself an ally and leans heterosexual. Throughout her career, Lizzo has been subject to body shaming due to her obesity. <laughs> she is considered a role model and advocate for body positivity and self-confidence. This is essentially the person who's being accused of fat shaming all of her backup dancers. Look, while I love nothing more than dunking on fat bitches, I have to say it's quite disappointing to see somebody who's a role model in a community, regardless of if I am totally aligned with that community or not. Again, if this is true, I think it's really disappointing that somebody who claims to be body positive is obviously obese. Somebody who claims to care about LGBTQ people. For somebody to be, you know, out here saying things like this, I think it's kind of embarrassing, honestly. Because, I, I listen, obviously you guys know my stance. I think you should be allowed to say whatever you want. I think that it should be normalized to, you know, make fun of people to have fun and you know i think that i think people take themselves a bit too seriously i really do i think that you can be a creative person who makes serious content but at the same time have a humorous background and and just chill and be normal for some reason there's like you can't be both there's got to be a dichotomy i'll just be honest i'm willing to make 40 percent jokes i'm also willing to say that i totally support adults who are suffering from gender dysphoria to get transitional surgery quick little note i meant to say hrt obviously you can get surgery too but i think hrt is probably the better intervention just given that surgery is very dangerous and difficult at this point if they want to be transgender i have no problem with them doing that especially if a doctor who is you know licensed and certified believes that it's the best thing for them you know i think that these two things can exist you can make jokes about things that are grim and dark you can also support the subjects that are surrounding those grim and dark realities <laughs> Make sure you drink water, kids. Now, so far we've spoken about the fat shaming allegations, but this goes a bit deeper. NBC News reports three former dancers have filed a lawsuit against Lizzo, accusing the singer of sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment. Three of Lizzo's former dancers have accused the singer of sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment in a lawsuit filed Tuesday. They also allege that she pressured one of them to touch a nude performer at an Amsterdam club and subjected them to an excruciating audition after leveling false accusations that they were drinking on the job. The dancers accused Lizzo, the performer known for embracing body positivity and celebrating her physique, which is fucking large, that's for me, not the not the writers by the way, calling attention to one dancer's weight gain and later berating then firing that dancer. I definitely recommend you read this article, I'm not going to read the whole thing, obviously I don't want to rip the whole thing, but I do want to read this one more part. The suit, filed in Los Angeles Superior Court and provided to NBC News by the plaintiff's law firm, also accuses the captain of Lizzo's dance team for proselytizing to other performers and deriding those who had premarital sex while sharing lewd sexual fantasies, simulating oral sex, and publicly discussing the virginity of one of the plaintiffs. Now, outside of the actual physical stuff that may have happened, a lot of this doesn't really matter to me. In, in my scenario, I don't really care. Obviously, if I ran a business, I'd avoid any of this type of sexual stuff, especially around women. A lot of these things can be chalked up to jokes and normal shit that really, on the day-to-day, -day, I could see me or any of my friends saying. Jokes involving simulating oral sex like obviously people always do the the fucking this thing everybody does jokes like that but the thing is when you're lizzo when you're lizzo's dance captain
often when you're people like this that are essentially quasi political figures problem isn't the fact that they may win or lose this lawsuit problem is if any of this is proven to be true now their fan base has a load of ammunition to go after Lizzo let's say it wasn't harassment let's be charitable let's let's extend that olive branch right let's say that she was just making jokes none of this was harassment and so that's what's found guilty or whatever the fuck people people say oh she, she actually just made jokes she wasn't being uh she wasn't harassing anyone she wasn't hurting anyone on purpose the reality like what ends up happening anyways is that her fans go wow she's comfortable saying this stuff she's comfortable making jokes like that whether positive or negative oftentimes the relationship you build with your audience parasocial or not it's oftentimes determined by the way that you portray yourself and if you portray yourself as this body positive lgbtq loving person this person that somebody would never make jokes about weight or shape or sexual orientation or you know whether you're promiscuous or not when you portray yourself as somebody who is so accepting and then you are shown to whether it's through harassment or through jokes not be too accepting you're going to lose a large mass of your audience look i'm not lizzo's pr team but what i do know as a content creator as somebody who's amassed a small following is that i try to be myself i try not to accept things because they're publicly accepted i try to think things through and think does this align with my morals is this a normal thing is this something that i can come up with a good reason to dislike is this something that i can come up with a good reason to like I think that oftentimes people just see ideas that are very popular, perhaps could get them a little bit of clout, and they just run with it. Now, in fairness, Lizzo is a fat shit, and maybe it's kind of hard to be antibody positive when you're that large, but it's insane that you would flip the script and start calling people that dance for you, that work for you, that are in your business fat when you, anyways, you get, you get the point. I want to end this topic with this quote from one of the plaintiffs. I just couldn't sit with the fact that this was happening behind the scenes. Scenes. She's kind of contradicting everything she stands for. And it's just another wake up call to be aware that artists are regular people. They can be full of faults. They can have problems that behind the scenes you just don't see. And obviously in this case, these problems are pretty superficial and they're kind of just meme annoying things outside of the harassment and potential physical implications of some of the said and done. But nonetheless, these contradictions between her persona that she portrays to the media versus who she is behind the scenes with people that are supposed to be helping her with her career, people whose careers she basically dictates the success or failure of. I don't blame any of these plaintiffs for attempting to seek the justice they feel is necessary. But ladies and gents, that's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to give you guys some background details. Essentially today, I really wanted to make the Nick is not green video. Unfortunately, did not have enough time. I'm going to be making that video tomorrow. I dealt with some situations. Obviously, uh, I got the brand new a6700, which is a really nice hybrid camera that I'm going to be using for some of the work I'm doing for Tom, for myself, for this channel. And also, I also have, um, and also... <laughs> This was another big thing that I've dealt with over the course of the day. We had a tornado in my neighborhood. It actually blew our dumpster all the way across our driveway. Thankfully, we parked the car inside, but um, yeah, a little, little bit of damage that we had to deal with. Nothing serious. Uh, thankfully, no one got hurt in the neighborhood. But yeah, that's basically the um, short and long of what happened today and why I wasn't able to make the Nick is not green video today. That being said, I will be back tomorrow. I will be making that Nick is not green video. I have a large vendetta with the way that he's handled these super mega allegations. In fact, I don't think that it has anything to do with Super Mega. I think if you have any issue with how Super Mega has conducted themselves, I think that that's fine. But I think to uh, extend it to, I mean, if you saw the title of Nick is not Green's video, he essentially says Super Mega is full of horrible people. And while that's a fine opinion to have to make that the title of a video that you know is going to get a lot of views, I think it's really crazy. I think that saying that Super Mega is full of horrible people, I mean, Super Mega is, in my opinion, two people. It's Matt and Ryan. They had a couple of subcontractors that got into a situation, a little scuffle, a little SA, allegedly, of course. And if you want to report on the SA, that's fine. But to throw an entire brand under the bus is very interesting. And to be honest, and to be honest, if I was super mega, I would probably be a little bit more litigious. But again, that's just how I feel. Anyways, thanks so much for watching today's video. Drink some water and I'll see you tomorrow.